Good morning, I'm Vince, and this is the HeartNet Flow Show walkthrough entitled Trading the ISM Inflection. In this report today, Michael goes through what he believes will be the next leg of the economy, economic recovery, and it will be driven by production. The ISM is the Institute of uh, Supply Management, Supply Chain Management, I should say, and their, their marquee data point is the PMI, Purchasing Managers Index, and the PMI is very helpful. It's a boots on the ground type of data piece that they get from private sector. It gives them an idea from pricing, from inventory management, from employees, from cost of goods. You know, it gives it gives everything as well as insights into where they think the trends are going, uh, these uh, these managers. And it has become it has been very important over the years, but it's he believes it's going to be very important going forward from here. It will drive the market higher if the market is to go higher. Okay, scores on the doors, crypto 18.6%, oil 9.7%, stocks 4.8%, commodities 3.7%, US dollar 2.6%, cash 70 basis points, high yield bonds 30 basis points, investment grade bonds minus 1.9%, gold negative 2.5%, government bonds minus 3.8% year to date. Tail the tape, we are just a few weeks away from the four-year anniversary of the COVID lockdown. 10-year yields of 0.3%, SPX of 2200 Unemployment rate of 15% all back then. And just look at us now. There are two the price is right categories. The first one is about the Japan Nikai. It only took 34 years, but the Japan Nikai is at new all-time highs. The JGB yields back in 89 were bubble peaking at 5.7%. They are only 0.7% today. But both Nikai highs are aided and abetted by currency depreciation. Japan, Japanese yen was 144 back then. And it is 150 today, higher meaning weaker. The price is right part two is the lead in to his ISM inflection conversation. Our domestic monopolistic bull. If you look at the contributions to the SPX, the SPX is up 25% in the past 12 months. The Magnificent Seven is 60% of that or more. Top 10 stocks. So if you add in the Magnificent Seven plus Walmart plus Costco plus EI Lilly, it's greater than 70%. And if you just take the top 20%, 20 stocks, it's greater than 80%. <clears throat> the biggest picture, all cyclical assets are now trading at an inflection point in ISM. Based on the historic relationship to ISM and current valuations, the best trades for this environment are long producer, short consumer. And those are, in 2024, commodities, Mercantilist stock indices, the COSPI, the OMX, the DAX, and emerging markets, ex-China. Also, cyclical assets not yet discounting an ISM jump to 55.60, table one. Now, table one shows the, the ISM, the PMI index, and what he's looking at there is he believes that if you look at Japan and semiconductors as greater than 60% or greater than 60 they're leading production uh, taking hold and everything underneath that is going to catch up to it. So home builders are pricing. The market is pricing them at a 60 industrials, 55 Germany, 54. So he's saying buy Germany, right? Buy emerging markets, ex China, right? Buy Korea. All right. Uh, buy commodities, buy industrial metals, buy Sweden, buy materials. He's saying everything that's between 45 and 55 like here, they're going to go up to between 60 and 65, or at least 55 and 60. And understand that he's saying that the implied ISM of these of these uh, assets, of these subdivisions, is based on how the market is trading. So he's saying that the market is trading them low in relation to not only the ISM, but in relation to semiconductors and the Japan Nikkei to begin with. Before we move on to the meat of it, let's go through his charts. Because I know that, you know, it's hard to go back and forth. Bull and bear indicator, 6.6 .6 unchanged. I suspect that'll be higher next week. U.S. 2020's exceptionalism, real GDP growth 15 quarters into the U.S. expansion cycle. Looks like we're in the top three for the last, I don't know, 70 years. Fastest U.S. consumption recover since 1945. There's your proof. He believes this is a consumption-led economy and that that's about to run out. 
Chart four, modest CapEx recovery, real business investment growth, 15 quarters into U.S. expansion cycle. Right. So even though the government has spent a lot of money, we're not spending a lot of money on our own companies yet. All right. Five, worst residential investment recovery since 1945. I believe he's using that as a, as a, as a lead in to say that uh, we're going to have to spend money on that. And so there's your, there's your uh, more production, more investment, more raw materials being used. U.S. consumer strong versus global producer weak. He's saying that uh, gold production is low, but uh, we're still hiring a lot of people. So that's why we have consumption and that these are going to narrow. Order inventories implied ISM to inflect higher. Okay. The ISM is behind uh, new orders. So the ISM manufacturer's PMI needs to go up because the ISM new orders uh and in new orders versus inventories is already going up. So there's new orders being placed and the manufacturers have to start making things. Chart eight, EMX China discounting ISM at 54. Okay. DAX discounting ISM at 54. So these are basically graphic representations of that data, of that data point. Industrial discounting ISM at 55 and materials discounting ISM at 51. Japanese stocks are already, they get ahead of the market, he's saying. Japanese stocks are already discounting a big jump in ISM. Semiconductors are already discounting a big jump in ISM, but note they are in a different AI-driven cycle, right? So there's going to be probably some uh, attenuation from that. Next chart. Small businesses signal price pressures in coming months. Yes, prices are going to go up again. That's PMI stuff. To our 15, fastest start to the year for money market inflows. I don't know what to make of that. Let's see what he says about that. Longest streak of inflows to investment grade bonds since 2021. If you remember last week, he said big tech stocks and investment grade bonds are the new safe haven for investment. Chart 17, largest weekly inflow to small caps since, since June 22. All right. Well, there we go. Let's go back to the report. That's the meat of the charts. Weekly flows, you can take a look at those year to date. I want to go to the Bank of America bull and bear indicator. It stays at 6.6 .6 as stock market breadth is a lower FMS cash allocation are offset by higher hedging SP 500 and US dollar. So basically saying the 6.6 .6 that we had last week remains unchanged this week, but it will probably go up next week based on the performance this week. Now we get into the meat. US 2020 is exceptionalism driven by... U.S. 2020's 